webinar coaching session. A couple of people are on right now. Sam, I know that you've called in. I wanted to help you out with anything that might be going on right now. First off, some clerical. Can you see my screen? Can you see that? Yes, I see go to webinar. Yep. Okay. So if we were to create some content right now, I don't need to save that. I don't need to save that. What's the most important thing we talk about today? I was calling it to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> well, you're the only fly. So let me ask you, um, you saw some momentum happening over probably 30 days ago, right? Yes. Yeah, so you see no momentum going? Or you, what's that? Since bold has been done, I've, I've had some momentum building up. Okay. Are you still seeing that? Are you carrying it out? I know you're somewhat in a transition mode, kind of. Has that uh, changed your focus, or are you still going as if you were staying here full time? Um, I think I'm still focused as if I was staying here full time. I think I've been unorganized, just trying to put everything we've learned the last couple of months together. Um, I've gotten really organized over the past week, kind of prioritizing who I should be working with on a regular basis, who I should be ignoring and letting them call me. Okay. They want so how, are you, how are you prioritizing that? What qualifications do you have? Um, I've set up the pipeline report basically with A, Bs, and Cs, and then divide them up between buyers, sellers, and renters. So okay. just trying to make sure I'm touching those Cs with, you know, every couple of months. Trying to make sure I touch the Bs every couple of weeks and the A's every week. How do you qualify them as A, B, and C? What defines that? A's are people that were actively looking for properties uh, within the next 30 days. Okay. B's have got, I would say, one hiccup or less towards you know wanting to buy a property, whether it's a lease expiring. Or we are we have maybe talked if they're if they're cold leads from internet leads we've talked but uh, we haven't had a consultation. I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you a little bit to make an A buyer someone who is ready, willing, and able to write on a contract today. Because for you, so a lot of people with 30 days out. That's kind of a B buyer, 30 to 60 days out. That, that to me, is someone who's really going to be in the pipeline. But if your goal every day is going to be to write a contract every day, you've got to do that with A buyers. I think that will really help you kind of with the – when you have your A, B, and C buyers, what if it gives a false sense of security? For instance, if I was coaching external clients, however, instead of being new, I'm constantly coaching people who – own your own franchise brokerage, it's kind of a false sense of accomplishment. Because just because I'm going through that action there. And from, from talking to a lot of the agents who do the same thing you're doing, who are succeeding at a high level, their A buyers are able to ready are ready, willing, and able to write in a contract today. And that might help you. Do you have a minimum yeah. go ahead? No, go ahead. I said do you have a minimum expectation for yourself of how many A, Bs, and Cs you want at all times? No, I haven't got that far. I have okay. right now 75 total people I'm working with. Um, the A's, I have three under contract and 14 A's that I'm working with. 14 A's. So when you say A, these are by standards of pretty much ready to go and within the next 30 days should be able to write. Or some of them are already writing, yes. How many of them do you think would, if you had took them out this weekend, would be ready, able, and willing to write? Six. Okay. So if we add this to six days, those are the two, those are the six I want you to focus on now because it's very hard to juggle 14 people. It's very hard to manage that. Now that you can go, you've got six A's, and 
How many B did you say you had out of 75? Uh, if we count those eight we're not counting here, the Bs go all the way to five. It's going to be 30-something. So it used to be 22, which now yeah. we're making into 30. Yeah, we'll call it 30. Okay. And then you see the rest, just kind of people who would like to buy a house as soon as something happens. They, they move or their credit gets repaired or they sell or something. So. Fees would be expiring, et cetera. Right. So if we just do the math there, 14 plus 22 minus 75, that leaves you with 39 Cs. But now we know it's actually, well, still 39. Because for me, I think it's going to really help your conversion rates if you can say, you know what, leave those other eight Bs alone, they're not ready yet. And you know they're going to be the A's that the closest next. But I'd rather you make sure that those six A's get exactly what they need from you. And what I've, what I've heard from a lot of the top buyers agents, from Gabby and Rosa and, and Christine and Cindy, six to eight A's is about all you can handle at one time. And that's with you just being monitoring all of their needs that they need. You know they need this house and this neighborhood, this school zone, that you're on it. Because anything more than that, you drop the ball a little bit, and now they're doing searches on their own. Now they're going out to open houses on their own because now they're not doing their job. You're just not giving them everything that they need, and they have a pen in hand just looking for the contract. So, what is your what is your follow up with the A buyers? What is it? Yeah. What have you? What's your organization follow up with that? Well, I try to make sure I touch them at least weekly. If it's an, if we're actively looking at properties, I have some A buyers that we're talking to daily. But uh, some of them, I guess, these A's that are actually B's, you know, are, are weekly. Yeah. And that's what I think you hit it on the head. You, you've you've named them an A, but I think your actions show that they're a B. I agree. So, so I take agree yeah. Them. So maybe A A and or A one and A two if you want to keep it there. So. That might help you focus on that, and now your goal is to constantly have maybe eight A's. Because frankly, the B's and C's, that's where your lead generation of prospecting comes from. You can do an open house, and you can have 10 people walk through, six of them are garbage, two of them are B's, one's a C, and, and one's an A. Cool, you just added one more A buyer. But for you, you're, you're going to nourish, you sat down with Craig numerous times, right? Yes. If you remember Craig's little diagram or dialogue with so once you meet the contact here, it's either going to the database or to a lead. This is this is database right here. They're just keeping touch with 33 Dutch and them. Uh, no, I mean, but you you you're the type of guy who you came in here and said, you know what, I'm I'm going to commit, I'm going to do learning based, and, and you saw some momentum. What would you say is your biggest struggle in, in real estate right now? Is it organization and prioritizing? I think we're getting that under control. I think just wondering long term if the four or five months that I've built this pipeline up, that now that I'm pushing it and uh -huh. working it, that once I've closed these people, if there's going to be anybody on the back end or if I'm going to have that roller coaster effect. Gotcha. So that typically happens when and, and you sat in enough of my sessions and you start doing checklists. You put these six people under contract right here. Now all of a sudden you're a full-time transaction coordinator, and you forget to move these people up. Yeah, moving and, the and people up. And that'll just do that consistent. Um, last week on the Wednesday session, Bernie, you were there. Bernie, call in the phone number. I know you're not logged in right now. And Travis, do you hear us? Yes. All right, so Travis, you're on there as well. Typically, when you do your lead generation, your prospect in the morning, you're going to have your plan A. And your, your plan A is going to be, when I say A, don't just confuse A, B, and C buyer, but this is who you prospect to, so you lead generate. These are going to be people who are expecting your call. So, you know what, good talking to you, Travis. I'm going to talk to you next uh, Wednesday morning. And they're going to be expecting your call, or it's going to be a signed follow-up from whatever your follow-up system is. Maybe this person you met in an open house and you put a mental note or you put a reminder in EN and say, I'm going to call you Thursday. And you open up your plan A and you've got your past life self telling you what to do. And of course, it's leads as well. You call up a, a neighbor and they give you a lead of their coworker. 
that's what's going to be there. Truly, if you guys had enough people who were expecting your phone call, who you assigned to follow up or lead for two to three hours a day, you wouldn't need anything for plan B, which would be the, the, the target, would you? Realistically, when people do these exercises, the reason why people really don't lead generate for two to three hours a day isn't because they don't have the time, because frankly, you have plenty of time. It's because you don't have the people who are needing or expecting a phone call from you. If I were to give you guys 50 names of people who said, Rick, I want to buy a house in the next two weeks, almost everybody would have the time to call those 50 people. And I think the big difference is when we sit down to prospect to, to fill this pipeline to avoid that roller coaster, you're saying, I've got four people who are expecting to call. That took me 20 minutes. Great, now what? Oh, I know what I can do. I can go be a transaction coordinator. I can go check in a checklist. I can go to a class. I can go to inspection. And now all of a sudden, when those four people turn to three to two to one to zero, you've got zero there. Now you've got nothing in the pipeline. Does that make sense? So that's when you want to figure out what's your plan B. If you've committed to two to three hours, or maybe you've committed to, to 20 contacts, <clears throat> Sam, you were in bold, and the goal was 100 contacts or conversations a week. That's 20 a day. Did you do that when you were in bold? Yeah. Are you doing that now? Absolutely not. Now, so the what is the big difference? What is the big difference? The big difference is I've been busy with the A stuff, the plan A stuff. Okay. And I've been unorganized with it. Okay. I haven't so, had that plan A as a plan. It's been, you know, sitting around wondering all day, looking here, looking there, what I'm supposed to be doing. Now that I have that organized and I say, this is what I have to do today on that A, mm -hmm. you know, with the lead follow-up along with the lead generation, I feel like maybe I can do that now. Right. Because you started off saying, since bold, you have seen it, except now you're catching up with all the momentum you got from bold. So let's say here for plan A, for people who are expecting your call, you had a total of five people. And if the goal is to do 20 people a day, that means we need to talk to 15 people right here. And this becomes just your job. This becomes your job just like it's your job to make sure the appraisal is ordered on your, your contract. So plan B people becomes your focus of lead generation. Now, there's 100 different ways to lead generate. And we all have our favorite, and we all have our not so favorite. What is your favorite way to contact to somebody you've not met yet. Bernie, you're on the air as well. What's your favorite way to contact somebody who's not expecting your phone call? Is it FISBO's expired, door knocking, open houses, allied resources, a phone book? What is it? I would think it's probably well, people that, um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, I would say it's probably people that you already know. I think it's easier to touch bases with people that you currently know. Um, you know, this could be a happy birthday or a follow-up, you know, how's it going, you know, how's, uh, how's it all coming along on a, on a sale, or if it's somebody looking to buy, you can just follow up with them and see how everything's going. So it's to rewarm that database a little bit to see who in the database yeah. is there. And then you, if you contact 15 people, maybe two of them, out of the statistics of, of two out of 12 or one out of six, say, you know what's fun, you call the I am in the need, and they become part of your plan A. So what are some other ways to do it? For me, it was, it was open houses. It was my old job. I would network and call people from my old industry. Uh, there was a point when I first got into business, I was also the senior class president for high school, and the 10-year reunion was there. So I killed two birds with one stone. Instead of giving everyone a mass email, giving everyone a direct phone call from a 10-year reunion. I felt the reason I got talking to people anyway. I'm gonna make some business out of it. The thing is, the stuff that you're already, yeah, think of the stuff that you're already doing. You're already having conversations. Um, see, Bernie, you've got kids, and you have them play sports or go to school or that sort of thing. They go to school. They used to play sports before, but not not anymore though. Okay. How often are you going to the school or to the open house? Are you making a point to? You know, sponsor that school. I think one of our agents, Mark Kelly, he sponsors his school program 
costs him 200 bucks a year. He's a title sponsor. And with that, they do a monthly newsletter. And guess who's on the back of every monthly newsletter? Mark Kelly is. No, I haven't, I haven't done anything like that, no. So think of stuff you guys are doing already and how can you incorporate it. I've had people who they say they go to the gym every morning. Well, could they use that as part of their way? Say, so I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to talk to three people a day about real estate. It's going to be weird because I don't want to talk to anybody and I don't want to be talked to, but I'm going to talk to three people a day. Now you only need 12 left. And you go through this because just like in bold, if you guys truly focus on 20 people a day, then this just automatically happens, doesn't it, Sam? Automatically, you've got 75 people in your pipeline who are A, B, or C. And eventually, time goes on, you close four of these, two of them fall off. These guys, half of them went somewhere else, and half of them kind of came in too. These people, who knows, they're always going to be seized forever, and you're going, well, shoot, i got no one left. So constantly think about that aspect and what you're doing, and really get that plan out there. Does that help at all, Sam? I think you've identified... I'm getting there. Yeah, you, you've identified that you, you're, you're, you're on the track of that roller coaster. You're like going up, that crack, 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 crack. And we got to jump, jump you off before you get down it. You know, and Jenny Weaver says, she uses this example a couple times, in the roller coaster that you guys see right here of real estate, you're going to see the, the opposite happen with your legion. Legion typically is low, and then you have any business and goes high. And you get business and your production goes low, and it goes the opposite. And really your legion has to stay constant. Because when it stays constant, the number of people you talk to remains constant. Your conversion rate increases, therefore your sales increase. And you really get a stylus because my mouse is the worst handwriting there. But we'll talk about that a little bit. And this is kind of a recap of what we talked about last Wednesday, right Bernie? So, Bernie and Travis, what's the most important thing we knock out in the next 20 to 30 minutes? Can you hear me? I hear you. What's up? I don't know, man. Uh, I'm just trying to, um, you know, get started. And my whole thing is time. I mean, you know, I'm, just, I'm limited on what I can do to, you know, evenings and weekends. So, um, I don't know how to best use my time other than, you know, do my lead gen, at, you know, in the evenings, and I'm using a lot of, um, you know, basically my friends, friends of friends, people at work, their friends. So I actually have quite a few leads right now, but um, it's kind of limited to that, and I'm almost scared to get too many people going because, you know, I, I got another job. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to, you know, be a bad agent, you know what I'm saying? No, that's, fear of success is actually a common fear that either A, you can't deliver on what you, what people expect of you, or B, that if you talk to more people, then heaven forbid they're going to want you to do more work and you just don't have the time to do more work. So right. it's actually you, you accepting this giant hamster wheel that says, I would love to be able to leave my permanent position to be in real estate, but I can't do it unless I sell this many houses, and I can't sell this many houses because I'm too busy to do my permanent job. And, and you you, you're, you're a part of that hamster wheel. So the way you can change that, because people are motivated with more time and more money, and right now you're motivated with more time. How do you get more time back to allow you to do the things in real estate to get you off this wheel? And that's done through leverage. Have you guys read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book? I haven't, yeah. There's, there's three L's in leverage. Um, I'm sorry. Three L's, leverage is one of them. Three L's in real estate, leads, listings, leverage. And leverage is done in three ways. I mixed that up there. Through people, systems, and tools. That's leverage. Your first level of leverage truly is E-Edge. It's a marketing plan. Hey, Joey, call on in. We'd love to hear your input as well. If you can hear us. So people, systems, and tools. You have the systems and tools in E-Edge. Have you plugged into everything E-Edge can do for you, Travis? Oh, yeah. Um, it's great. Okay. So you're, you're plugging in there. Um, that way you're able to convert people. Once you convert them, you're probably, it looks like, or sounds like you take your foot off the gas and you say, ah, I don't really want to do this, and they go somewhere else. So what's a solution you think you could do if, if your brother wanted you to buy a house and said, Travis, I'm using you no matter what, even though you're new, 
but you knew you didn't have the time to commit to it, what could you do? Call Sam. <laughs> I mean, that's, no, in all seriousness, Joey Desane just logged on. We'll get him as soon as he calls in. Joey and I started real estate together at the same time, and when I went out of town, when he went out of town, we had each other's back. And it's a similar concept of when you're working, you have somebody who's got your back, who you trust to take care of your clients as well as you take care of themselves. Because the, the nice thing is if you can't handle a client and Sam can or someone else can, you get 25% of that, sometimes maybe 50% of that. And if you can do that, it's going to get you off the hamster wheel a heck of a lot quicker. Because for you to make a transition and do it comfortably, you've got you to at least replace that income. And as an engineer, you're making a pretty healthy income, right? Yeah. So we've, we've got to replace that. Do you know how many closings it's going to take for you to replace that income? Um, um, a lot. Probably like two a month. So 24 closings to replace it, that's a full-time job. Right. The average not. single agent can do 24 to 36 closings by themselves before they need assistance. So I want you to start thinking of the other type of leverage of people. So Sam is one type of leverage of, of partnering up with an agent who can split the commissions. There's also what's called transaction coordinator. And this is what I was just talking with Sam. Don't get caught into being a TC because, frankly, you can, you can pay a transaction coordinator, um, whether it's hourly or per deal, about 300 bucks per deal. So you have something under contract, and the average price point is 150000 So your commission is 4500 right? Mm-hmm. You pay a split, you pay royalty and everything else out there, you keep about 3000 of that. And the transaction coordination is everything from contract to close. Uh, using a TC is going to coordinate everything to make sure they're clear to close, the loan commitment, the inspections are done, uh, organize the title, <clears throat> make sure everyone's always doing something. Now, they don't do real estate for you because you're the realtor. However, I'm going to turn this off. You can pay them 300 bucks at closing. That becomes an expense bottom line. It's $2,700. And that freed up time where you can still work and do things when you need to on the outside. Let me see. I've got a question out here. There he is. So, Joey and Bernie, you guys are unmuted. Joey, welcome back, buddy. How's it going? Good. So I, I was just sharing with, with these guys how you and I started off. Both Joey and I resisted using transaction coordinator early in our careers because when you're not selling that many houses, 300 bucks, I'm starting to spend that. I'm, I'm going to give myself some gifts and think, I don't want to spend $300. And the first time I was forced to do this was when I went out of town for a convention. I had to do it. And my gosh, it was a blessing because they literally took all that off. So for Sam, for you too, when you're working these A buyers, they're under contract, instead of waking up every day and saying, what do I have to do on this systematic contract to close minutia, give that away to somebody else. They'll let you know when you need to step in because your job is to contact these 20 people a day. If the deal does not close, you owe them 50 bucks. So you only pay them this amount if it closes, and that comes just 10% off of it. The reason people don't always do this is because Dean Gonzalez has hired his first assistant. Well, Dean's closing five closings a month. So instead of paying 1500 he got a full-time administrator who's paying 2200 getting full-time. Does that make sense? Yep. You guys ever heard of this concept? Or you, you no, I have not. Against it? I have not. Okay. But, um, you know, I'm kind of at the, you know, uh, I guess I'm being a little greedy when, you know, I feel like, you know, I became a real estate agent not to split all of my clients, you know what I mean, all my deals with everybody. You know, I kind of, I got into this so I could make some money. So it's kind of like, you know, if I have the clients and I got a deal going, I mean, I'll make time for it. But my whole thing is, is you know, if I'm wanting to close 24 closings in a year, I obviously need to make a decision on which job I want to take. You know what I mean? I have to quit my well, job. You absolutely do. So if you were to give it, and no disrespect here, Sam, but if you were to give it to Sam at 50-50, then it's costing you 
2200 of your gross commission. It's costing you 1500 Or you give it a transaction coordinator, and it costs you 300 Right, right. I get that. So, I mean, that's a great, a great idea. So I'm definitely, I already wrote it down, so I'm definitely going to consider that. Here's the company, BlackTreeIncorporated.com, BlackTree Consulting. They're local. A lot of our agents use them. Joey, did you use them? Do you still use them? Uh, yes, yes, I did. I did, I did so, not still use them, but when I did, they were absolutely amazing. I encourage you guys to at least try them out, if anything else, to steal their systems and checklists. And they'll be okay for you to do that. Because if you see how systematic and methodical they are with the way they do TC, um, it, it's, it's just nice to get it off your plate. So, um, Bernie, I just, did that answer your question, Bernie? You're posting it on there? Now you know who yes, it is. Yes, sir. Be Thank you. Awesome. Got it. Thank you. Bernie, what's, uh, what's on your mind? What, what can we talk about today? Well, you know, I just got uh, one buyer under contract. Got another one I'm still negotiating. Um, actually giving up some of my commission to make that one happen. And, giving up um, some of the commission with whom? Uh, with, with, well, it's actually going to be with the seller, I guess. Um, the seller is wanting uh, a certain amount, and the buyer is close, but not exactly there. And you know, I look at it this way: I'd rather I'd rather sell it and make you know some commission than lose the whole deal and have to put the buyers back in the car and show them another, you know, three, four, five properties or what have you. So do me a me favor. It. Uh, off this call and off of a recorded phone call, come come chat with me about that. Absolutely. We don't have to do it right now, but we can chat about that in private later. Not, nothing to, nothing Sounds huge, good. not in trouble, just to, to chat some negotiation tactics. Um, okay. So tell me about your tell me about your prospect and if you're born again real estate journey. Well, I've been contacting you know, past clients. The biggest, okay, so past clients. Yeah, no, I've been contacting the past clients. For me, it's just the, you know the time that it takes. So I'm definitely going to get a, you know a transaction uh, a transaction coordinator involved because. You know, having to put everything in eDash and schedule inspections and, you know, get in touch with the title company and with the mortgage broker and, and do all that. So if I can get that passed on to the TC, that's going to free up more time for me to start um, showing more property and writing more, more offers. Yeah. By the way, uh, TC, these people also do your green sheets and your eDash stuff for you. They've been trained in that. You just give them your login, they can do that for you. So it's a great way to just get it off your plate and just stay focused on your one thing. Good. And I apologize. i got to take this call. I'm going to be put on mute and I'll be right back. Okay. Right. See ya. So Joey's on here. Joey, you've got uh, a couple agents, Sam Scarlett, Travis Fleming, fairly new in the business. Sam, probably about six months, has done the bold that Ignite. Joey, how many times have you done bold? Uh, four times. So like I said, Joey and I started together about three years ago. He's done it four times. You want to give them your quick journey of, of what you've done in real estate in the past three years? Um, sure. Uh, I started, like Rick said, about three years ago. Um, it took me about six months to close my first deal. I had every hurdle that jumped up in front of me throughout the process, and um, I got frustrated and overwhelmed. And as much as I wanted to quit, I'm, I have been strong enough willpower where I didn't let myself and I just kept pushing and um, eventually I got my first closing and after that I kind of just knew the systems and knew exactly what I needed to do every day to generate new clients and new business and I spent all my time focusing on that and um, the first year I believe I ended up closing about 10 or 11 transactions the second year went up to about 17, and now this third year, I've quadrupled my business, and um, I have 26 under contract right now. So it's been a great year for me. Um, How many you closed year to date? Really? Year to date, I am at 43. 43 closed year to date under 26 in the pipeline. Yes. And so, so go ahead. I didn't say so. Really, the the first six months, our goal is to get every agent under contract in the first thirty days, close ninety days, and you saw outside of a window of six months. Um, you and I had a very different journey. As I had success in those six months, which was probably very frustrating for you, because we oh, were yeah. roommates at the time, and, and 
<laughs> bullpen buddies. The difference is you kept Joey was the guy. He was a rookie of the year up here. He moved to West Palm, so he doesn't know him anymore. Uh, but he was the one who was in here before me and left after me. And I'm not saying that you need to work around the clock to be successful. However, he was committed to self-mastery. And if you guys were in the team meeting today at the six personal perspectives, it was self-mastery saying, what's my goal? What's my challenge? What's my opportunity? How am I going to get there? So for you, Travis, you've got a goal of 24 closings. Let me ask you, what's your greatest strength for you to close 26 closings? Uh, strength is probably my current relationships with my friends, uh, co-workers, and family. I have quite a few leads right now. Everybody's wanting to buy a house. It's just a matter of time. They have a few months. Um, so, so what would you say is your biggest challenge or weakness then? Um, the time? Time is my, my challenge because I can't do all the uh, Ignite and classes that I probably need to learn some of the contract stuff and things I just don't know. So I get kind of, you know... I'll get, like, I'm going to dive uh, into that. Then, is it is it time or is it lack of knowledge? Both at this point. Okay. So, what's the most important thing you need to learn this week in order to give yourself uh, some confidence to work with your sphere of influence? Um, basically, contracts. Um, in particular, Fannie Mae. Um, we actually, I have a, uh, could possibly have my first deal right now, so I'm kind of excited about that. They're supposed to get back to me tonight, so we'll see what happens. Okay. So who can you talk to to learn more about contracts? Um, I've spoken to Dean. He's been very helpful, um, so I think he's got me to where I'm comfortable going forward um, at this point, but um, luckily it's a friend of mine that I'm dealing with now, so he's okay with me, you know, stumbling through a few things. Okay. I want you to constantly think about those 24 closings. And, and you said time. However, it's not time. It's actually a skill set. Right. Because we right know now. that you already have, yeah, you, you have the people. You don't have the confidence nor the know-how to get them where they need to be. Agreed. Therefore, you're likely not closing them when you could close them. And they might be going with an agent who doesn't have the integrity you do you do and it, and don't have the best interest because not only do they not have the knowledge or skill set, they also don't have a relationship with them. So you could actually be affecting them by not working with them because there's a lot of agents out there who are part time or who aren't skilled or who don't have the training that we do. So think about that, that you might not be doing them a favor in most cases. There's a lot of inexperienced agents out there. Yeah, they would definitely so, be doing me a <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want you to be afraid of success because you have people here. And if it's Sam, guess what? You can take this person, you can give it to a Sam or to a Dean or a Bertie or whomever, and 50-50 or 25% is a heck of a lot better than nothing. Because if your goal is 24 closings, what if you just make that 100 referrals and you stay at your job and you're there? Right. I want, you to, I, want, I want you to think about don't let this be what's preventing you from going of time, if you don't see this, don't let time prevent you from hitting success because you have people for that. It's one of the reasons you join this office, because sure. we have the, the resources for you. You're not alone in that aspect. Hey, Joey, I gave you the testimonial, but I'd love to add some value to your business as well. What's going on in your business? Okay. What's your goal this year in 2013? Uh, my goal is to close another 50 um, transactions in the next uh, next half of the year. So 93 closings year to date. 93 year to date, and um, we're we're on track to that's that's the exciting part in my book. It's everything that was set at um, in the beginning of the year when I made my business plan is actually going as of planned, and it, it's a huge eye opener for me because every every week I review my business plan, and then monthly I look at it like an overview, and then quarterly I do a bigger overview of what happened throughout the year. And it is so awesome to actually be able to go back and say, oh, wow, I actually did this and, ex and exceeded it. Or, okay, this is where I need to uh, focus a little bit more of my time on because I didn't reach my goal this, this quarter. So what can I do next okay. quarter to prepare myself? And that was What kind of business plan are you using? Is it out of business planning clinic? Is it a 4-on-1? What kind of business plan are you using? 
Uh, yep, I'm right out of the business planning clinic. Okay. So for those of you guys who don't know what business planning clinic is, every fall, uh, usually around October, November, the region puts on a business planning clinic and a top, top, top agent will come down and do it. And what's important about doing it in October is in real estate, what you do today affects you 90 days down the road. And then once you do it, this is probably the key aspect. You're actually reviewing it. Because most people who create that business plan, they put it away, they do it once. They look back in November, December, and they say, what the hell happened in my year? Oops, that shouldn't have happened. Well, I wish I would have noticed that I was spending way too much money in this aspect and not getting my return. So, Joe, what's significant about 93 for you? Um, just based off of what the volume that I wanted and the price point here and the amount of time that I have in leverage, it just made sense that 93 was that number after breaking everything down in the 10 different levels that I did. Um, my goal is 93. I'm shooting for about, I'd say, 110 based off of what I reviewed uh, yesterday. Um, and I, I slightly changed my goals based off of this uh, new month coming. So it should be 110. My goal is set at 93. I should be able to hit it based off of the projection that I have now. Um, but the big key that has opened my eyes so much is reviewing re reviewing your business and reviewing all your expenses daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. If you don't do that, I could ask you a month from now, hey, how are you looking to reach your goals this month? You're going to have no idea. You're going to blow some, you're going to blow some butt, and we're going to go past the conversation, and the next month you're still not going to know where you're at when it's versus your goals. So you have to have your written goals in place, and you have to review them. If you don't review them, then it, it, there's no value in it. And that was my big eye-opener this year so far. I'm confused. Is it 93 or 110? No, 110 is a new goal that I set myself. My business plan goal is still uh, 93. That's just that okay. I said to myself uh, on Monday or yesterday, I'm like, I, I need to up this. It, it could easily be 110, but before I went and changed anything, that was my mind talking. So you've got 110. What needs to change or take place in your business to up your goal by 50%? Because if you sold 43, 110 minus 43 is 67. Mm -hmm. 43 into 67 is 64%. So what are you going to do to grow your business in the third and fourth quarter from the first and second to increase by 36%? I am I am in the process of interviewing two buyer's agents as we speak. I have, actually have another interview with one tomorrow. And then also hiring a marketing assistant because uh, the amount of listings that I'm that I'm carrying right now, I'm lacking and I'm not converting as many leads that I could be from the marketing side because my marketing on the internet and as well as converting sign calls is just not there. So I need to. You are, do you already have a DA? Yes. You already, you already have an executive assistant. Okay. If uh, and I don't know anything about your team down there. If are they reaching their full potential? Yep. Everyone, and that, that, that's uh, the breakthrough that we're trying to get through right now. Everyone is pretty much at their full potential, and everyone, after reviewing and making sure everyone was in the right place for their personality, we realize that it's not that they're in the wrong place and that they're um, not doing their tests as easy as they could be if it was directly for them. It's that they're just so overwhelmed with the amount of work, so they're getting frustrated. So I need to, as as the team leader, I need to take a couple things off of their plate and leverage them enough so they could be working at their full potential in the task that they're supposed to do. But right now I have them if so overwhelmed, I need to leverage them a little bit. If I were to interview your EA and your buyer's agent right now, would they be able to tell me your goal is 110? No, they would be able to tell you their goals because their goals are different from mine. Okay, so they don't know the vision of your, of, your, of your team. They know the vision. They, don't, they might not know the exact transaction, no. What would they know? What's their goal? Their goal, the buyer's agent, hers is 32 for this year. She has done 16 so far. 
and then the EA, the EA would know Michael. Absolutely. Okay. That's right. Well, that's good then. Because that's, that's kind of your EA. That's what I was more getting at, I, I suppose, is that your EA is your right-hand man, your, your back of house, your front of house, to make sure they're on board with that vision, and you do that weekly. So for, for Bernie, Sam, and Travis, anyone else here listening to this, really what he did was just three years ago built up his pipeline, built up the skill set, kept working, kept working, kept working, and all of a sudden momentum started happening. And his first year closed 11. The second year was able to close 18. In the third year, light bulbs went off, systems were in place, he had some capital to hire the right people to make the right partnerships, and now he's looking to do average price point of 200000 Would that be fair to say down there? Uh, it is 217 as of this month. You think it's important for you guys to know his numbers? So Joey's on goal to break through $20 million in his third year. Uh, but I don't think many people do that. So hats off and huge kudos to you, Joe. Thank you. I think the important thing, or let me ask you guys, Sam, Travis, and Bernie, what are you guys hearing when, when you listen to someone who's, Joey, 25 years old now? And I am actually turning 24 on the 27th of this month. So when you hear someone who's turning 24, who's not quite completed his third year of real estate, who's got this going on in his business, what are you guys hearing? What is something that you're, you're telling yourself or you think that you learned from the call? Well, I think it's definitely possible, um, you know, for myself because that's, um, you know, being so new at it, um, my goal is to quit my job and become real estate agent, you know, full time, you know, and have my own business. But I just want to make sure I can close a few deals to get some capital, so I can do some more marketing and get some more leads. And you know, it's kind of I'm just tight, you know, right now. So it's right. Yeah, um, and for you, I'm not going to be the dead horse. I think for you, it's utilize the team you have to get out the hamster wheel as fast as possible. What about you, Sam and Bernie? Anything that you guys have? Just heard through the conversation through Joey. Yeah, uh, this is Bernie. For me, I'd say that it's very encouraging. Uh, you know, somebody somebody young uh, with all of those dreams and the desire and the ambi ambition and the motivation and the discipline to be at work, to do the work, and to you know to not let too many things distract him, if any, because Joey's very committed, very dedicated, and um, just to see that he can do that alone motivates me. To, to do more on my part. Awesome. Yeah, I think the, the big thing for me was he kept his eyes focused. He had that first year struggle. This is the biggest thing right here. It's following the business plan. Number one, if we did a survey of, of realtors who are out there licensed, how many of them actually have a written business plan? Number two, if they're written, how many of you them are actually following that written business plan? Because in bold, we learned the formula to success. Sam, you were in it. You remember what it is? Um, the formula for success. Does this help? You guys got to know where you're at. You got to know where you want to be, 24 closings, 110 closings, whatever it might be. You've got to get started. And by doing these reviews and having to self-check with yourself, is you're making adjustments. Pardon that, that typo. So many people take a look at goals and they go away. Last Friday, I had the opportunity and privilege to, to sit and listen to David Osborne speak. Joe, do you know who David Osborne is? Uh, I don't. Name sounds familiar, but I don't know him. Like if someone, I'll, I'll give you guys a quick rundown of Joe, um, David Osborne. Let me say Joe, David Osborne. He's the son of Althea Osborne. Althea Osborne was the fifth agent hired by Gary Keller back in 1983. Althea Osborne is the highest profit share earner in the history of Keller Williams. Last month, she made $79,000 in one month in profit share. So David Osborne, as a teenager, he grew up and his mom was the fifth agent of Gary Keller. So Gary, being in his late 20s, went over to the house often to build this little company called Keller Williams. Um, Althea Osborne owned the North Texas, New Mexico region, 
and she needed help. And there's only probably 30 to 50 agents at Kettle Williams. So she said, David, you're in your mid-20s. Go run this region. So she, he became a regional director of this little company called Keller Williams Realty that had probably eight offices at the time. And he was also uh, put in charge of an office, or one of his OPs, and his first OP was Mark Willis. Mark Willis, now our CEO. His rookie of the year was Mary Tennant. And Mary Tennant is now our president. And then, of course, Gary Keller is his mentor as the owner of the company. So David Osborne now is 47 years old. And he's worth $100 million net. He has five people working for him, and two of them are going to make a million dollars this year. He has investments. He is the owner in 10 different offices. And listen to this guy speak. You think it opens up those possibilities. You're, Holy cow. And what was amazing, and similar to what I saw in Seth Campbell when I saw him last month, is these people have goals written down in a book that they review daily. And that's something that I, I'm working to adjust because when you can read what your goal is and it's there every day, and then you ask yourself, what have I done today or yesterday that contributed toward this goal and what am I going to do today to make it different? You can't help but grow. You know, he spoke of Gary Keller every Sunday. would we'll look at his net worth and say, what did I contribute to last week that contributed to my net worth? And just the, the focus that these guys had, and like I said, he's 47 years old, and you think of the amount of connections and opportunity and horizontal passive income he's done, and the difference is he, he admittedly said, he was, I have no idea who's winning the Zimmerman trial. He goes, because my mind does not have time for the George Zimmerman trial. My mind is to focus on what's important in my business. And... Joe is probably, you know, on the track of being there at 23, 24 years old, like creating the habits that in 25 years we're going to be talking about the 47-year-old Joey DeSane who did that same thing because he's created these habits early of reviewing his goals. How many of you guys have a written business plan here? And you don't have to answer that question. If you don't, go to, go to kw.com and, and look at business planning clinic. MyKW.com, let's get on here. If you have it already, are you reviewing it? Sam, you've got a portfolio that's fantastic with that, where you've opened it up. You've got your mission, your vision, you've got everything. Do you still carry that with you? Yeah. So are I'm you reviewing that every day? I uh, used to. I don't as much anymore. But okay. I definitely should. It's in a folder called Daily, that I'm supposed to look at daily. <laughs> So you just need to get out of your way and follow your own directions. It's um, Because when I saw that, I was impressed. You knew exactly how many leads you had to get every day. And if you stay in that focus, there's no way you can fall down on your goal. Because if you're not getting the conversion rates you want, guess what? You're going to make adjustments. And you'll know about those adjustments on the day or on the week. So if you want, I don't even know if this is in here right now, but we can take a look. Business planning clinic. Let's see if we use your business plan, 11 minute, 5 minute videos, business plan introduction. You guys can take a look at this if it's something you want to do. Use these resources. Travis, perfect for you because you're not able to go to all the trainings we have here. Use this KW Connect. Focus on that business plan. Um, you know, we go back here and I want to look at education at Keller Williams University. It may even be in here. We can browse ADV. Yeah, that's where you can find the document. Where is it? Uh, What's it called, Joe? What document are you talking about? Part. The plan. If you if you go to the search Keller Williams University and type in business plan business planning or it's business planning clinic, you could print out the three hundred page uh, full business plan that we get when we go to the class. There you go. So I just typed up business planning clinic, MREA business planning clinic. Type it in. You guys go right here. Downloads available. I have the structure version, but you can do this. Look at here. I've got everything I need. I can take a look at this business plan. Open it up. And here's your clinic. And it helps you how to write a business plan. Now this is exactly what we go through in that class taught by a facilitator 
But there's no reason we can't do this right now. Because everything's written for it to be done there, and it goes right off the models from your real estate agent book. So when you have a plan that you can follow, and you look at that plan, you make adjustments, you're either going to be OK with failure, or you're going to make adjustments. So check this out. Toolkit. Your 411, we talked about that. This is goal setting. You have a 411, this is what are my annual goals? What do I have to do this month to be on track to hit my annual? What do I have to do this week to be on track for this month to be on track for my annual? It sounds a lot like what Joey's doing with his weekly review, monthly review, and add quarterly here perhaps. So there's one of your toolkits you can do. Some other toolkits they might have. Annual goal versus actual, monthly, business plans. Utilize this stuff. This is the economic model. If you need help with this, I'd love to do a session on this. Bring it up, and we'll be prepared, and we can do a business plan for you guys. If you're in productivity coaching, great thing for you to do with Lena. Or on Wednesday morning, I'll spring into the class tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Do you guys know this is there? Have you really dove into that? I've got someone on the phone on the here named Rick Rick, but I'm Rick Rick. So who am I talking to right now? Who else is out there? Bernie, Joey, Sam, Travis. Someone named Rick Rick. All right, we're the muted. They'll stay there. Um, what else do we need to talk about? About seven minutes left. What else can we do to make this a, a worthwhile call for you? What else can we do to pique your interest? I'll get with Joey. Oh, Joey just got offline. If he picks up the phone up, I want to ask Joey, what's your next level of success? I know you're not going to be content with 93 as soon as you hit it, nor 110. So I don't know what your long-term plan is, when you intend to be top 30 under 30. So if you get back in line, let's talk about that. All right, guys, anything else we can talk about? Anything else to address? If it's been helpful, great. I appreciate you being on here. I always enjoy talking to people with uh... – yeah, you bet. Who said that? That was – Bernie? That was me, Bernie. Yep. Cool. Appreciate you, Bernie. Yeah, guys, every or most Tuesdays I'll be on here for just to answer questions and help out and clarify. Never want you to feel lost. Always going to have a resource here for you because when you succeed, I succeed, and it's a happy place. So uh, I want you to think about right now who else needs to be on these calls. Who are you doing business right now, whether in our office or outside of this office, who can jump on here? Because it's a great way for agents who are not with Keller Williams to have kind of a no commitment or a stress-free way to, to jump on and at least add some value to their business. So think about those. We'd love to help them out and uh, also help you with some passive income. Guys, that's it for you. That's it for me. Enjoy your Tuesday. Good night, guys. Thanks, Rick. Good night. Thank you.